All right, how you doing? I'm Jeffrey Keith with the Aimless News. And here is an update for January 18th, 2021. Bill Gates, who is in charge of the vaccine apparently, is now also the largest farmland owner in America. There he is. He means no harm. Bill Gates may no longer be the world's richest man, but he can claim a new title, America's Farmland King. The billionaire Microsoft co-founder has become the largest owner of farmland in the United States by quietly buying up massive plots across the, I think that should be country, not county, Gates' portfolio comprises 242,000 acres of farmland and nearly 27,000 acres of other land across 19 states. The biggest chunks of Gates holding are in Louisiana and Arkansas, where he owns 69,000 acres and 47,000 acres. He also reportedly owns about 16,000 acres of home state of Washington. It is uncertain why Gates has invested in so much farmland or how his tracks are currently being used. I don't know why he has it all either. Couldn't have anything to do with GMO, could it? Probably not. Bill Gates is, seems to be pretty much a stand-up guy. Okay, moving on. One Florida school combated COVID by going back to normal. As a result, the children and teachers are safe and happy. At least one school in Florida addressed the C19 pandemic by looking at the data and science and putting in policies that made sense. The result is the children and teachers are safe and happy and all are back to normal living. When August rolled around, we were pleased to get a message from our children's school that they would resume normal school operations. No social distancing, no masks, no plexiglass cages around the desk, just normalcy, once again, as it should be. Yeah, that, that's, not, that's not child abuse right there. The school stated they would treat the virus like any other virus. They were not going to shut down the school, classes, quarantine groups of exposed children and faculty. They were applying common sense. Yeah, well, common sense is kind of like deodorant nowadays. Those who need it the most never use it. They were doing the exact opposite that Democrat-controlled states and school districts did. That's always a good decision. Do the exact opposite of what the Democrats are doing, and you're probably going to come out fine. They did not deny anyone from wearing a mask, however. They said they would not be mask police and force any child to wear a mask, nor encourage them to wear one. In fact, no one here wears masks. I mean, this is just... <laughs> Pure insanity, since a mask does nothing anyway. When a child had any symptom of being sick, they were not forced to take a test. They were sent home until their symptoms were gone. Then they returned to class. Perfect. This is the exact same procedure for any virus, any other year that they follow. Exactly. By simply having kids practice good hygiene, washing hands, they were effectively were able to not only control the spread, but we're able to do what no other school in the nation did, maintain normalcy for the children. Hallelujah. It's now January 2021, 20, five months into school year, and there have been no large-scale outbreaks, no deaths, and no restrictions. Our children are allowed to play sports, socialize, and be normal. We didn't need any vaccine to restrict the virus, Kids aren't as susceptible, and most don't have symptoms, period. It is time to return to normal. Hallelujah. Let's follow Florida's example and get things back to normal. Yeah, L.A. County is talking about making it mandatory for children to get vaccine. Let's get back to normal. This is craziness. Jerry Nadler. You know Nads. 
We haven't seen old Nad since he crapped his pants. Wonder where he's been. They're probably still trying to get him cleaned up. Okay, this has to do with the media, mainstream media going completely bonkers over the people that stormed the Capitol last week. Left-wing terrorists bombed the Senate in 1983. Bill Clinton let them out of prison early at Jerry Nadler's request. On his final day in office, President Bill Clinton commuted the sentence of a pair of radical leftists serving time for bombing the U.S. Capitol building, where a 1983 blast shattered the second floor to Senate wing. I guess the mainstream media forgot about this. They said last week was, wor was worse than 9-11, worse than Pearl Harbor. These people actually set a bomb off in the Senate building. Linda Evans and Susan Rosenberg, she, she's a beauty, each served 16 years of lengthy sentences, with Rosenberg escaping 42 years of her sentence and Evans cutting short 40 years sentence by 24 years. The FBI landed formal indictments on Evans and Rosenberg in 1988, and they were sentenced to jail, and Clinton let them out. Here's the good part. Susan Rosenberg is now a prominent left-wing activist who early last summer sat on the board of Southern Currents, which poured $10 million into causes for social justice, including our favorite group, Black Lives Matter. Wow, what a coincidence. So the person who actually bombed the Senate building is now a major fundraiser for Black Lives Matter. And Bill Clinton let him out of office, uh, let her out of jail on his last day in office. Here's Nads. I am once again urging that President Trump be impeached and removed from office. We have a limited period of time in which to act. The nation cannot afford a drawn out process. And I support bringing articles of impeachment directly to the House floor. That was on January 7th. It was only several months ago, however, that Nadler dismissed violence by Antifa, the radical left-wing terror group of the 21st century, as a myth. While the militant ar anarchists erupted a historic summer unrest that tore apart downtown city centers. Yeah, oh, Nads. This guy, yes, Nads, he's looking good, isn't he? Do you disavow the violence from Antifa? That's a myth that's been spread only in Washington, D.C., Nadler said. About Antifa in Portland? Yes, it's only a myth, according to Nads. <laughs> Who supports and reelects this guy? Well, I guess we know how that works now. Never mind. Okay, let's move on to CNN, the bastion. Of free speech. ONN, One American Network, and Newsmax have freedom of speech, but I'm not sure we need Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, bringing them into millions of homes. This guy, I forgot his name. He used to be with Facebook. Anyway, here's what he has to say. And second, we have to turn down the capability of these conservative influencers to reach these huge audiences. There are, are people on YouTube, for example, that have a larger, daytime, a larger audience than daytime CNN. And they there are people on YouTube that have a larger daytime audience than CNN. Let that sink in for a minute. The alt media is winning, and these guys are panicked, especially this little peckerhead. All right, let's see what else he has to say. They just can't believe that, you know, other news outlets are getting viewers. They are extremely radical and pushing extremely uh, radical views. And so it's up to the Facebooks and YouTubes in particular to think about 
whether or not they want to be effectively cable networks for disinformation. And then we're going to have to figure out the OANN and Newsmax problem. You know, that these companies have freedom of speech, but I'm not sure we need Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, mm. and such to be bringing them into tens of millions of homes. Um, I, I, this is, you know, allowing people to seek out information if they really want to, but not pushing it into their faces, I think is where we're going to have to go here. And second, we have... So... What he says is, uh, you know, he thinks they're going to have to go full on more censorship because, oh, my God, people on YouTube are watching more than people on CNN. Can't have it. Can't have it. You give these lefties an inch, they will take a mile. It has to stop right now. And now here's this guy. What's his name? Rahim Kassam. He pretty much sums it up here let's hear what he has to say come back to you know you asked us how we ended up in this situation and yes. and there's there is a big elephant in the room here that we haven't mentioned and we have to go back to it and we have to come back to the root causes of all of this because the root causes get and end up as the next leadership the chinese communist party took the jobs out of the united states the chinese communist party sent the united states fentanyl the chinese communist party bribed our political leaders bought our media stole our technology took over big tech picked a candidate sent us a pandemic and then turned us on one another so you want to understand why we are in the position we're in it's because hey an evil declared war on the United States on the free world many years ago, and we did nothing about it. And we have lost that war at this point. That is very, very nicely said. And it's people like him that these clowns want to get rid of. Okay, that's going to do it for this edition of the Aimless News. Subscribe to our channel, like and share this video. And remember, the aimless news must be told. <laughs>